Hello friends, this video on mineral nutrition part 1 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Topics to be covered in this lesson are Methods to study the mineral requirements of a plant Essential mineral elements Mechanism of absorption of elements Translocation of solutes Soil as reservoir of essential elements and metabolism of nitrogen. So mineral nutrition. The term nutrition is something which you have all already heard of. So what is nutrition? The food we eat when when we think of ourselves nutrition comes into picture when we talk about okay you should eat nutritious food so that you stay healthy. So nutrition is all about the food which we eat. So it is not the food exactly, the entire process of intake of food and utilizing that food to get energy. That is why we often say that if, if a person is fasting, if a person is not having food for a day or two, he tends to become weak because he doesn't have energy. That, that is because the food is missing. He is not taking in food. So this entire process is nothing but nutrition. Now, in a very similar way as we humans need food, we eat food in many different forms. For example, many of us eat vegetables, we cook them, we make them spicy and we make them eatable and then eat them. Some of us are even non-vegetarians who eat uh, meat, flesh, egg, fish or whatever. So there are many different varieties of food which we take in. Now, in a very similar way, even plants need nutrition. Now, when I talk about nutrition, you might uh, think that, okay, for plants, nutrition should be water because all we do is we water the plants and that's all. So, water alone can make, the, make a plant live. But that is not the case. Of course, water is very, very important for the survival of a plant. But other than water also, there are quite a number of things or quite a number of chemical elements or elements, whatever you call it, which is also equally important for the survival of a plant. Now, the question is, where do they get get these minerals so these are nothing but minerals and in this lesson we are going to talk about mineral nutrition so we are only going to talk about those elements which are essential for the survival or growth or sustenance of a plant now you you might wonder so who is supplying those minerals to the plant because we are supplying only water and nothing else so who is supplying that and plants can't move as well so from where is it getting the minerals which it needs so most of the minerals come from the soil and that is why you would have seen that most of the plants will have their roots deep under the soil so because that is actually the means from where they get all the minerals that they need so this lesson will focus only on the minerals which are needed by plant. We will see what each of those minerals do in a plant and how much, in how much quantity of those minerals are required by a plant. So that would be the main agenda of this lesson. And towards the end, we will also talk about uh, the metabolism of nitrogen in, in our atmosphere. We'll do that because we'll see that nitrogen is one of the most important mineral which is required in large quantities by a plant. So now it is not possible to talk about the metabolism of each and every mineral. So we'll take up nitrogen as it is something which is very, very important for a plant. Okay. So with this brief introduction, we will see directly what is plant nutrition. So how do we define plant nutrition? It is the process of obtaining food and utilizing it for growth, repair and metabolism. Now, in a very similar way, you can relate it very well to human beings, to ourselves. We all eat food. Why do we need food? So that we have energy. So what will happen with that energy? The food will help us to grow. For example, if you compare a baby which is well fed, if you feed the baby well with a lot of milk and what a nutritious diet, you'll see that the baby grows quite healthy. The baby puts on weight, the baby grows in a nice way. Whereas if there's another baby 
who doesn't eat well at all, doesn't eat properly, in fact, the diet is very less, you'll see that the growth is not that good. The baby tends to be lean and thin. It does. It, it is generally underweight. So growth has is directly proportional to the amount of food which you take in. However, there are a few exceptions. For example, genetically, some people are obese, so they tend to put on a lot of weight, even though they do not eat much. But otherwise, in general, you eat food and that food is utilized inside your body during the process of digestion. The absorption of the food happens. The food is first broken down into simpler form and then that is absorbed in your intestine. And then that is utilized for different purpose. For example, for growth, for repair. When I say repair, some of the tissues inside the body might get damaged or some of the tissues might die. So you need replacement for those tissues. So new cells need to come up. So what is that process? We discussed in our previous lesson. Exactly, cell division. So even for cell division, you need energy. For energy, you need food. Again, when you talk about metabolism, you talk, you are basically talking about all the uh, processes which take place inside the body. For example, digestion, excretion. Now, all these processes take place even inside a plant's body. Even a plant needs to throw out the waste materials from its body. The plant also needs to digest the food, I mean digest in the sense it needs to absorb or utilize the food which it takes in. So plants also have vascular bundles like xylem and phloem which conduct uh, the food and water to different parts of the body. So the various metabolic activities which are taking place inside a plant, growth, repair, so for all these things you need energy and the food supplies you the energy. So this entire process of getting food and then utilizing it for various purposes is known as plant nutrition. Now when you think of a plant, a plant actually needs a lot of chemicals, many chemicals or many elements for preparing food. Now for example, some of the elements which are needed by a plant are some of the very important ones are carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, other than these, I mean, these are like the most popular ones. So they get these. Now, plant also get its nutrition in the form of carbohydrates, proteins, fats, water. So these biomolecules we have already discussed in one of our previous lessons. But other than these also, they need all these as well. For example, carbon, oxygen. So how do they get carbon, hydrogen, oxygen? They get it through air and water. Through water, they manage to get hydrogen and oxygen because water is H2O. Again, from carbon dioxide, they manage to get carbon because during the process of photosynthesis, plants take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. So from there, it so from air and water, it manages to get the three of these. But other than these also, plants also require quite a number of other elements. For example, phosphorus, nitrogen, sulfur, calcium, chlorine, iron, boron, magnesium. So if you see, there are quite a few. I'm just giving a few examples. Now, here in this lesson, we will talk about the role of all these elements in the life of a plant. Now, all these elements, whether it is phosphorus or, or not only these, there are so many others, for example, sodium, potassium, they are also required. Now, but the amount of each of these which are required by a plant again differs. Like plant might not require boron in a very large quantity. But again, there is also a possibility that some plant might require iron in large quantity, whereas some other plant doesn't require iron in a large quantity. So the quantity of each of these elements which is required by a plant, that also differs. And also the quantity of one element required by one plant and another plant also differs. Now in this lesson, we will talk about all these things. I mean, which mineral is required in more quantities, which are required in lesser quantities, and what is their purpose in a plant. Now the most important question, why do plants need minerals? Had plants not needed minerals, we would have not been studying this lesson, right? So what is the role of minerals in a plant? First and foremost, growth. Everybody wants to grow. The, a plant grows, it becomes mature. It starts from, the story starts from a seed. 
So the seed changes into a seedling and the seedling grows into a small young plant and then that plant gradually grows and it becomes a huge tree. And then again, once the plant becomes mature, it is capable of reproduction. So it produces its reproductive uh, um, structures and from there again a new seed is formed. Again a seedling, again a young plant, again a mature plant and the process continues. So growth is very very important. So if growth stops, life stops. right? So minerals are required for growth. So when we talk, when we will be talking about um, each, each, the role of each mineral, we, you will see that there are so many minerals which actually directly impact the growth of the stem, growth of the root, and therefore the growth of the overall, overall plant. Tissue repair. Now, you would have often seen that some plants, sometimes it happens that due to lack of uh, minerals or due to lack of water or due to bad weather conditions, the plants dry up or the plants, uh, most many cells of the plants are already dead. So the damaged parts need to be replaced. So those damaged parts get replaced by newly formed tissues. So this tissue repair also need a lot of energy. Without energy, you cannot... I mean, you cannot form new cells to replace the damaged cells, right? So that energy also comes from the minerals. So the minerals help in tissue repair, reproduction, as I said, the process of reproduction itself, it involves, I mean, it involves some energy, of course. So for that also minerals contribute. Metabolism. Now all the life processes, for example, assimilation or excretion, etc., whichever how the transport, internal transport which happens in a the plant, they all cannot happen without energy. And for energy we need food. And for food, what is food for a plant? Food is nothing but water, minerals, that is the food for a plant. So a plant needs carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, water and uh, of course, of course, it also needs the food which it prepares. For example, you might be thinking in your mind that till now I knew that plant prepares its own food by photosynthesis. So now when plant is preparing its own food, why does it mean need minerals again? That is because in order to carry out the process of photosynthesis, it needs a lot of raw materials. And all of these minerals help a plant to carry on the process of photosynthesis. So photosynthesis is nothing but utilizing carbon dioxide, the energy of sunlight and then it prepares food in the form of sugar and then that sugar is distributed throughout the plant body. But in order to make that photosynthesis possible you need all these things. You need water, you need these minerals because they also help in the process of photosynthesis. So minerals are absolutely needed by the plant for all the metabolic activities that happen inside the body of a plant. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.